Hey everybody. You're going to get to watch me do something today instead of listen to me blab on and on about things that I've already done. I made all the stringers for this project using my following bit on my big router. Uh, I did buy this bit. It's mine now. Uh, I have a variety of these bits. They're essentially various depths and they have a following bearing on one end or the other depending on uh, a few different factors. Anyway, that means since the bearings on the bottom of this bit, it's following the pattern underneath the piece that I'm cutting. And so uh, I've just had to make the first one using, you know, pencil layout, circular saw, jigsaw. And instead of making, I don't know, 16 more, that way uh, I just bought a couple router bits. It, it didn't last, the first one didn't last through more than half of them, so I made eight, roughly, uh, if my math is right. But it was a larger diameter, it was a three quarter of an inch. And from what I understand, in my opinion, with all the machining knowledge that I have, which is relatively minimal, the bigger the diameter, the more of a lever arm you've got, and the more we're asking of uh, the motor to turn it around. I think that was the reason that this one, being half an inch in diameter, has gone further for me. So the way that this works is, and we're down to the last one now, is I you know, anchored the pattern on top of a sawhorse where I've got the ability to hang down below the edge of it all the way around without hitting anything and I didn't want any you know fasteners or anything in my way so that I just got it screwed down in the middle and then I made my, all my slugs or whatever you want to call them the um, pieces of 2 by 12 which is almost always what you make a stringer out of because of the overall width of it being sort of the greatest that you can that you can get commonly so that you end up with kind of a lot of meat here at the in the most negative areas of the stringer uh, that being said I wanted to get as many out of this uh, you know, I wanted to be as efficient about this as possible. So my stringers actually end to very end are 48 inches exactly. And because you get a little more than eight foot two by four or eight foot anything, uh, two by 12, I can make two out of an eight foot two by 12. And it's super efficient because pressure treated lumber is uh, expensive right now. It's, uh, the two by 12 is always the most expensive stick because it's the largest, so by the foot. Anyway, um, the point is, we get two out of every eight foot two by 12, which is the shortest stick you can buy. And so that's pretty good bang for your buck. And that was all a factor of early on, I was talking about where to go with the elevation of this lower deck. That was a big part of it. Because had I been any lower, um, a little bit lower, the steps each are six and a half inches. By the time you get up to around a seven inch step height, it gets to be too much. So a little bit lower and we would have had to divide out the steps more the stringer would have ended up longer and you would have only been getting one stringer out of an eight foot two by 12. Um, and then you could start getting longer like 12 feet or 16s and stuff and try to get an odd number as tightly as you can as, out of that lumber and make it worth getting by the foot. So anyway, blah, blah, blah. I took a look at this piece. You know, it's got a bad wainy kind of chunked out edge here. So we'll send that to the area that's gonna be cut away. Every one of these I've justified the end and the back, you know, to the pattern itself. I get it to you know a point that I'm feeling good about it. You fast forwarded through most of this already. And I don't blame you. I screw the one end down and the other. Just flush. Uh, and then all we gotta do is fire this pig up and let it work its magic. Maybe we can burn this bit up right at the last the last piece. Uh, we'll see.
I did not like that, and neither did that router. That's basically the end of that bit. You can sh you can see how hard I'm pushing it into the material, um, how much chattering it's doing. It should have essentially cut like butter, which it did for the first sort of half a dozen pieces. Um, I'm I'm pushing the limits of what it's supposed to be doing. I shouldn't really be tunneling through solid material. I should be overhanging. But essentially, the other side of this material shouldn't be encapsulating that cutter. You know, I shouldn't have this negative here. I should be, you know, rough cutting out that negative and then following the pattern to, you know, clean up this edge. The edge quality is poor. Again, I'm pushing the tool, putting a lot of energy behind it, which isn't very safe. Um, you know, you don't want to see people doing that in the workshop if you can help it. That was the last stringer, though, and it's finished. And like I say, those were 25 and ship, you know, about $30 each, so a pair was 60 um, it went really quickly making all the stringers and they're all exactly the, exactly the same better than I could really do by hand Now all you got to do is take this off And obviously since we're finished I counted the uh, The pattern <coughs> one of them you may have noticed I'm missing a few but you may have also noticed I'm missing the ones that die into a post and that's because I've actually got to take uh, the thickness of the post off the back so that they all work out the same to the front so one two three and uh, we'll set those ones in place oh thanks for watching we'll see you